Hey guys, it's Intricate from AmigaLove.com. This is just a really quick how-to video on my own personal process that I've learned over the course of time for uh, moving files from my classic Amiga hardware over to a more modern uh, PC environment. Um, and in addition to that, how I create ADF files fairly regularly uh, that I share on AmigaLove.com. Um, I do want to uh, give a little shout out to another YouTuber out there uh, named Shot97. It was actually this very topic a long time ago that made me uh, reach out to him and fill in some of the gaps that I had after watching his own video about this exact same topic. Um, he used different software than I'm gonna de demonstrate, but it's the same idea. Um, anyway, just wanted to say thanks for that. Um, that's part of the reason why I even started writing for AmigaLove.com was I felt like there'd never really been a step-by-step, easy-to-follow checklist. His video came the closest that I'd found at the time. And um, for those of you who have the same question of how do I do that, let's say you're just starting out, totally possible. Um, this is the way I do it. And it's very similar to the way uh, Shot97 does it as well. The first thing that I had to do was get what's called a null modem cable, right? which is this thing. It's fairly long. Um, it's female on both sides, both ends. One is nine pin and one is 25. It's really important, I believe, that you find one that has null modem actually embossed into uh, the plastic housing that lets you know it's the real deal. And uh, some people out there will actually make these things on their own because they're smart. Uh, I just paid Amazon, I think four bucks to have it done and shipped to my house for free. Um, but that's really the most important piece of hardware that you're gonna need for this uh, to make this connection work in the way that I'm doing it here. Um, the second thing that you're gonna need which was kind of a big deal for me because I've been a Mac guy for a really long time. Uh, it was I was going to need a PC. Uh -huh. The one that I use is this tough book. It's really not that tough. I would I would be really scared if I dropped this thing. Um, a little bit of a digression here, but there was a Matt Damon movie this last year where he's trapped on Mars. He's an astronaut. And in the movie, he's using, he's using one of these machines, which I could not believe because I instantly recognized it because I've been using one forever, um, that this was somehow a modern piece of technology. This thing's old. Uh, it actually is running Windows XP. Uh, it doesn't have to. But the reason why I got it originally was because I needed something small and I needed a PC and it has a serial port on it. A lot of PCs these days don't. Um, so what are you going to do if you have a PC, but it's actually not ancient like this thing? Well, I found this out because I actually destroyed my own port, plugging it in, plugging in my own uh, null modem cable over and over a million times, moving files back and forth. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, now what am I going to do? Get another PC? What have I done? No, there's actually a uh, adapter cable you can get. It's USB on one side and... Uh, the nine pin on the other, it's, it's male. Now cover your children's faces so they don't see this, but you get the male side into the female side, and now you've got one gigantically long uh, null modem cable that can plug into a USB port. The only thing I had to do uh, was I had to go into the um, device settings on Windows, the device manager, and tell tell the machine that that USB port was actually a COM port now, um, which was not hard to do. And in, any of you watching this, I'm sure you could figure that out, um, especially if you're familiar with Windows. Um, so once you have your null modem cable, which is again, really the most critical piece of uh, hardware that you need, um, then you've got a PC. 
Uh, and then it's basically all on software after that. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you next. So hold on to your hats. Okay, I had to go plug in my, uh, my serial port, make sure it was plugged in in the back of the machine. I always unplug these and plug them back in um, when the power's off uh, because they are wrapped in metal and I don't wanna accidentally fry something. Um, <clears throat> basically, like that, Basically what's going to happen is you're going to go to, what I did was I went to uh, Cloanto's website, right? The folks that make the very nice emulator software Amiga Forever, they also have a really handy piece of software called Amiga Explorer. And they have fairly easy um, to follow instructions on, on how to install it. I also have a link below this video. Uh, for an article on my website so that you can follow all along on all of this stuff step by step I really take you through the entire process of how to connect your PC to your Amiga classic Amiga hardware um, Utilizing their software, but I wanted to do a little bit of a hands-on how to show me video and so basically what happens is when you make the connection between your PC and the Amiga using your null modem cable and it has to be a null modem cable just go hunt that down on amazon.com and it only costs like three or four bucks um, and go grab you one of those if you want to do it the way that I've done it and it's gonna put this program here which I think you can see called a Explorer it's just a little uh, program that uh, when you launch it make sure that the ports are properly set up and you're actually going to utilize those settings over on the PC side PC side when you make the connection um, so that the two computers can talk to one another and share data. But when you first start up, you're gonna start up your Amiga, you launch that little program, then you should already also have Amiga Explorer from Cloanto installed. You'll double click the icon to start it up. And then what it does is it basically launches what looks like a Windows Explorer window, uh, but all of the, these are not folders, these are the actual hard drives of my Amiga that I'm seeing in real time. And these HDF files down here, these are the hard drive files um, that basically correspond to each of the drives that you see. What's cool about that is that if I wanted, I could actually take these HDF files and drag them onto my PC and create a, a, a complete backup of what they currently look like, which is, I've actually done that. Um, just in case a hard drive dies someday. I'll, I'll have a, 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 at least a snapshot in time right now. But the whole point of this was to actually show you guys how to move files back and forth in addition to how do you create ADF files, which was actually the key question that I received today. Which, and all of this is extremely related. Um, so for example, let me close this because it doesn't refresh itself in real time. You have to open and close the window each time a change occurs. But I'll move over to um, the Amiga, and I'll just put in, I'll just put in anything. This is a, this is a 64 door. I don't know if you can see that. It's a terminal program that I utilize. At least I used to utilize a lot um, on floppy. I still do on my Amiga 1000, but I did, I discovered you can actually run it right off the hard drive if you're running 1.3, which, ta-da, I do. So I'll put that inside the the DFO drive um, and you can see it's now on my workbench desktop right so I'm gonna go back to Amiga Explorer and open it and hopefully you guys can see this but basically right here it says 64 door is my floppy and down below it is 64 door dot ADF how do I create ADFs? I literally just click on that ADF file and I drag it to my desktop. Now, let me move this down so you can see it's starting to read from the floppy drive and it takes somewhere between three and five minutes. You can see over here, there's a progress bar of the files being read from Amiga and transferring over to the PC and after three to five minutes, somewhere in that ballpark, the entire uh, floppy will have been copied over as a ADF file, which anyone else can then use 
which is extremely handy, especially if I'm trying to make duplicates of uh, games or utilities or other types of software and I want to share them with the community. Super easy to do. The Amiga Explorer software basically costs $10. Um, and the null modem cable, you can make your own if you're really industrious. I'd rather just give Amazon my $4 and let them send me one in a couple days, which is what I did. So for less than $20, I have a really easy to use system that allows me to transfer files from one to the other. Um, and I, I do this almost on a, a weekly basis, certainly not daily, there's no need for me to do that, but um, almost every week I'm, I'm, I'm going through this process. And it, it, it really isn't hard at all. Um, the hardest part about this entire thing was the initial setup. And again, I've linked an article down below this video, which will walk you through step by step with all of the settings uh, that you'll need um, in order to get it set up on your own machines in just a matter of minutes. It's really, really um, pretty straightforward. So guys, I just wanted to pass along a couple other uh, odds and ends about Amiga Forever that make it incredibly powerful and very, very cool um, for those that are visually inclined. Um, and want to go this route. A couple of really important powerful features. Uh, number one, you can do this entire process in reverse. Um, let's say you are on AmigaLove.com for instance and you download one of the games that are in the games library. You decide to go over to uh, say Pang and download the Pang ADF. What do you do with that ADF? It's on your PC, well you fire this all up again, connect it with the cables, open up the two different programs on each uh, machine, and then once you see your Amiga drives uh, in Amiga Explorer, you drag the ADF in your PC onto the drive. Assuming you have a uh, actual blank floppy disk in your DFO drive, or whichever drive you decide to drop it into, um, Right? You go get your, you go get a blank, you format it, you put it in there, it'll say it's empty at that stage, that's what it calls it. You go look for empty when you open up uh, Amiga Explorer, drag the ADF on top of empty, and it'll start to write that ADF that you found online onto your physical uh, media and make you a kick-ass brand new Amiga disk of whatever it was you were downloading and wanting to, wanting to play. So there's that. Uh, the other thing uh, that's really cool, um, and it's just not easy with my current video set up to show this, but basically when you're inside of Amiga um, Explorer, assuming you have hard drives, you can click on the drives inside of the window and it'll actually then take you into a literal folder structure that you would expect to find. All of your drawers in your, in your hard drives, they get uh, displayed in Amiga Forever, or yeah, Amiga Explorer as folders that they are. And all of your individual files are there. And you can literally click on any of those and copy them over, move things back and forth. It's absolutely phenomenal. It really is just an extension of your file system at that stage, it feels like. You're just working inside of another um, series of folders or a hard drive on your on your PC, but it's actually over on the Amiga. So it really gives you that window into your file structure that is not necessarily easy to usually see on the Amiga side. Um, of course, the process is slow because the null modem cable can only put so much data through it and the Amiga can only uh, send and receive at such a you know particular rate but who cares it's it's not supposed to be a liquid fast it's it's incredibly easy to use and super useful um, and I can't recommend it more highly um, the trans ADF way uh, is is another route that you can go that allows you to uh, you know pick and choose whichever files you like or you don't have to drag entire ADFs over with that as well um, if, that, if I remember correctly, I believe that's what you can do. In any case, you should check it out. Go check out Shot's video about it. Um, 
And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments or over on amigalove.com on the article that's attached to this. And uh, I'll do whatever I can to, uh, to help out. Amiga forever. Take it easy.